Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences online satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters. All questions are most welcome. Paramjit is asking, without grace nothing is possible on the path. How to get the grace? It is not possible to get the grace. It is already there. You need to remain open to it. That means surrender. And how to surrender? That we have discussed many times. You can check the videos, you can check the podcast with the topic of surrender. Keshav is asking, life is perfect as is, but is there any benefit in gaining knowledge of pre-allocation? No, there is not much point except it will give you some peace of mind. Because ultimately, whatever you know, whatever you do, the same thing is going to happen. This is called destiny. It is predestined. So simply knowing what is going to happen is not going to change anything. So no benefit is achieved. But it will give you a peace of mind that whatever is coming, you know. And so you will be stable. But you won't be able to avoid any events that are already pre-allocated or any karmic fruits that are going to come. There is no avoiding of that. There can be two kind of people that those who want to know the pre-allocation so they can bypass it, avoid it, change it. And there can be second kind, those who simply want to know, curious, what is there in my life, what is coming. So in first case, there will be no benefit. Simply knowing it will not change it. In second case, you can say that I know what is going to come. I know what is going to be the journey. And so you will be stable, peaceful. So you can call it a benefit if you want. If you can do that, if you can remain stable, peaceful and in a state of acceptance without knowing anything past, future, then that will be an achievement. That is the real benefit. How can you do that? Awareness. Be in awareness. Then without knowing the pre-allocation or without any kind of anxiety, you will be able to sail through without any problems. There is another issue that once you know what is going to happen, it will kill the suspense in your life. It will become somewhat boring because you already know. It is just like watching a movie when you already know the story. The fun is spoiled now. So if you take your life as a play, as a movie, which it is actually, it is your play, then not knowing is more adventurous, there is more fun. So there can be many points of views about this thing. Some people will say, I don't need to know everything that I'm going to do. I need to know a few things, important things, like whom I'm going to marry, in which company I'll get the job, and at what time I'll die, and who will be my guru. I want to know all these important things. So there is an objection to that also, that The things you think are important are the least important. Who is giving it a tag of importance? Ego. Look, your marriage is least important. Your job is lowest priority from the spiritual point of view. So those who think these events are important like death and so on, they are ignorant. That is why they are trying to know it. If you have the knowledge, you will know that death never happens to me. Marriage never happens to me. Anyway, seeker is not going to do do that kind of mistake even if it is pre-allocated. And the job and these things are simply things to be done in the spare time. A seeker knows what is most important, isn't it? Are you trying to find it in your pre-allocation? Or are you trying to find the important things in the future? Then it's already too late. You are already in ignorance. So as you progress, the pre-allocation, future, destiny, It all becomes meaningless. The more ignorance is there, the more attraction is there towards these things. Because the attachment is filled with the body-mind and the pre-allocation is applicable to the body-mind. It affects the body-mind. It totally depends on where you are on the ladder. Those who are at the bottom, we encourage them, okay, go and find your pre-allocation. Those who are already up there, what do you want to find? You have found everything. What is important for you now? Simply watch. Because the best play is already produced and directed by the Maya herself. She is the best 
play writer what are you going to change now there is no break to change anything krishan is saying i heard sadguru say that for most people lakshmi may happen and durga may happen but saraswati never happen does he mean that people lack knowledge yes probably he means that but uh, you see probably there is another meaning that they do not seek knowledge what are they seeking wealth money power durga represents power isn't it influence and so on but they are not seeking knowledge and the reason is that they think i already know is there anybody in the world who says that i am already rich i am already most powerful no but most of the people they have this delusion i already know everything so probably that's what sadguru is saying have you seen anybody compete for knowledge they compete for jobs they compete for money they compete for women partners nobody is is competing for knowledge so the saraswati dimension is completely absent from the society that is what he means there is a little bit more degradation nowadays that people are very proud of donating money food so on they are not proud of donating knowledge they will charge a big fee if they want to teach something but yes you can take the bread and butter and so on food they will donate it have you seen people donating phones or computers very rarely very rarely because these are the means of knowledge you see so it has not touched them so far the most important thing is still basic survival sandesh is asking what are your thoughts on different yantras which sadguru sells at the lakhs of price under the name of god's grace is there anything strong like yantra which can liberate people no they do not liberate people they can make some seekers progress a little bit what do they do those who are on that kind of path those who are surrendered to the devi they get benefits from it what kind of benefits mostly worldly kind success in the life and less misery so what are they doing is they are trying to trap people although those who want liberation will never want these yantras isn't it they want liberation so they are not for people who want liberation they are for people who want success or you can say supernatural powers super powers so that is why they are able to pay that much money will it happen will everybody get you know returns from the tiantras no very few people get it but many people will get some kind of extraordinary experience and some people will be amused but a few people will get impacted by it that look there is some truth in spirituality so they will take up the path which path they are going to take up the tantric path not the path of liberation so we are talking about the bottom most layer here of the society if they have lakhs of rupees that does not mean they are evolved they are still rich animals so sadguru is targeting them because no other possibility is there their only possibility is worship and these kind of miracles superstition so on and what is happening is that their money is now channeled into charity schools environment protection drinking water so on sadguru does not keep it in his pocket so even if they are fooled by these things because for most of the people nothing will happen but they get a satisfaction that we have paid for something nice something good you see we have published the books also and now the english version of the path of knowledge book will be published very soon i heard that it is almost ready or did they publish it already i don't know <laughs> so it is the same content which is available on youtube and other videos and the, and the program but some people still buy it they they are going to buy that book they already know what is written in the book why do they do that because it feels good that i have given my money for something which is spiritual something greater than simple survival so the same process is happening in the isha foundation and it will happen like this till sadguru is alive and after that you can guess after that it will become a shop business they will still sell these gods and goddesses to the idiots for probably 10 lakhs now and they will buy it so that is the disadvantage that is why we do not do these things because we think about long term 
I'm also creating yantras. What are these yantras? You know, the best yantra is human body, human mind, best natural intelligence. Already created. What are we doing? We are simply programming them and releasing them in the society. That is the best way. So, on the path of knowledge, we do the same thing. We try to uplift people. But our method is totally different. We are using the living yantras to bring people out of ignorance. So that is why you have the step number 7 in your program. Now you can understand. The plan is very big. The plan is not to tell you that everything is illusion and you are the Brahman. You already know all those things. This is also called the wheel of dharma. It is being spun. It is rotating since the beginning. And we are simply giving it a little bit more push. That's all we are doing. Sadhguru is doing in his own way. So all the best to him. Sandesh is saying, so according to what you said, Murti Puja is also somewhat fooling people. You don't need to fool people, you see. They are already fools. So if they think that I am going to benefit from these things, they will buy it. They will spend their time on it. And if one out of ten benefits, progresses, job is done. So the intention is not to fool people. The intention is their progress and the progress of ordinary people also through charity and so on. And there will be fools who will expect too much from these things. I mean, we cannot change that. There are big temples that are constructed simply to fool people. That look, this deity is going to give you everything. Just give it a little bit of money and food. So they are the real businesses here. Places of worship all over the world are simply businesses. So most of the population is very much ignorant. And they don't have any desire to come out of the ignorance also. So this will continue forever. So if you see that there is a tendency in these people to worship things, you can exploit that to make them progress. That is a trick. They are tricked into spiritual progress by offering another way. Instead of going to the dead deities, because in the temples mostly the deities are dead. There is no consecration there. So... A tantric will offer them something else which will make them progress plus he will get the money. So remember that Sadhguru is on the tantric path although he knows everything about everything but right now he is doing this thing. So you can call him a Mahaguru because he is walking on two or three paths at the same time. He is in the path of knowledge which is obvious but nobody wants to listen that thing. So he pretends to be a big tantric which he is actually then people listen to him. Then they come in the, his satsang. Then he is seeding the Shaiv path, Shaivism, and the Shakta path, the worship of the Devi. Then the Kundalini and Hatha Yoga. And now you can see that he is trying to work on all the layers. He sees, sees that people want to go to temples. They want to worship these statues. So he built his own biggest statue probably in South India. And so on. So as soon as the people come in that area, they progress one inch, little bit, 0.001% progress, simply because they are in this kind of guru field. So this is happening since a long time in India that those who are not ready for spiritual progress, they are also given something. There was a time when every street in South India had a temple which was consecrated. And what was that kind of obs obsession with the temples? They were all tantric temples. They were not for religious or devotional purpose. Now everything is reversed. Now there is simply blind belief. So why? There are so many. If you go to Cambodia, which was a part of South Indian Empire actually, you will see thousands of lingams everywhere. So why? <laughs> why was that kind of madness? What is this lingam? Isn't it a yantra? Yes. So the prosperity was so much, people had so much money and time that they could do all these things. Now how many yantras do you find in India? Hardly any. And like Sandesh said, only those who are rich, they can afford consecrated ones. Those who are poor, they can afford stones. They are just stones. Even if they worship it, they are worshipping a stone. So how many tantrics are there that can consecrate the lingam? Hardly anybody. So Sadhguru is trying to revive it probably, he is training his own people. But uh, I think that golden age will never come where in every street there was something which caused progress in people, which gave them the spiritual environment. Now it is not possible, I think, in this age. 
So what we are doing? We are using the modern yantras like your phone, your PC, whatever is possible. <laughs> it is being sent to you. This is called the grace of the Guru field. Like he was asking how to get it. No, no, no. It is being given to you. Sometimes it is forced on you, but you don't want it. That is the problem, isn't it? Nobody wants it. The Guru field is everywhere and they are working even at the levels of animals. They, they want the animals also to come in the human category. But we do not see all these things. It is all hidden. So Sandesh is asking, can you tell us a little bit of about consecration and how it is done? Sure. We have launched a new program called Tantra Bodhi. You can join that program if you want. Go to the portal. You will get the link to the Tantra Bodhi. The, all the tantric processes are explained in the absolute detail. There are 60 videos on this, which is double of the path of knowledge videos. So everybody is most welcome to join that program. Shrey is saying GCR is also yantra made by Guruji. Yes, more are coming. Every app that you use, every website you visit, every group you join is a creation of the Guru field. Actually, there is too much grace. You will get bored of it. Hopefully, in few days, there will be surprise in this matter. Siddhant is asking, everything is layer structure. So we can say that those layers of heaven and hell exist. Yes, actually there are many such layers. Heaven is defined in the tantric way, a world where there is prosperity, happiness, desire fulfillment of all kinds, beauty, technology and knowledge. That kind of world will be, uh, will come in the category of heaven. And hell is where these things are lacking, opposite of that. So how many are there? Infinite. There are as many worlds above as there are below. Why don't you get to see all these things? The first is you are trapped here. The second is there are too many. You visit one and they are all same. You will get the idea. So how will you end up in the place that you want is the law of attraction. Convert yourself into that kind which is suitable for the heavenly worlds and you will automatically reach there. This is called evolution. And if you fall down to something which is suitable only for the lower worlds, the hells, you will automatically reach there. So this is the secret of going to other worlds. Change yourself and the world changes. You cannot remain what you are right now and expect to get a glimpse of it. Even if you get a glimpse of it, it will be like a dream, which we call the projected state. So there are many traditional ways of going to heaven, but the best way is self-development, self-evolution. Siddhant is asking, is it true that we are always evolving or devolving? Yes, because of impermanence, nothing is stationary. So we have only two ways, either go up or go down. This is a choice that you have. There is no choice to remain as you are. Because if you remain as you are, it is devolution. You can imagine that this whole universal memory is like a river. And if you want to stay where you are, it, it won't be possible. Either you will go down or you can call it up. But uh, there is no option to stagnate here. So here we are going to end today's satsang. Thank you everybody for participating in the satsang. We'll meet next time.